Humans evolved in an environment that looks very different to the one that we find ourselves in today. And whilst our brain is very good at perceiving foods, threats and faces, it is very limited when it comes to perceiving flat images on screens or paper. This is why it's so easy to trick our brains with optical illusions such as this. The blue dot here is the same size as the red dot. This creates a problem. The modern world is abound with graphs and figures, but no matter how accurate we make them, our brain could trick us into seeing something completely different. And it's for this reason that not all graphs are created equal. The science of graphing is more about perception than it is about design. But how do we know what's easily perceived? I'm about to show you a graph. What is the value of C? I'm about to show you another graph. What is the value of C? Scientists run experiments such as this and record both your answer and how quickly you reach that answer. The faster and more accurate a response, the better a graph's performance. But it can get kind of tricky. We are dealing with the brain after all. Whilst old staples like the bar graph, scatter plot, and line graphs are consistently high performers, the humble pie chart has had a rocky history. Early studies showed that we are not good at perceiving angles or area, the two things that a pie chart relies on. So for a couple decades, pie charts have been the bane of many scientists' existence. Their elegant and simple designs make them popular for designers, but the science says they are poor at their job. The preferred alternative has been the stacked bar, a simple but slightly less elegant solution. But recent research has given some hope to the pie chart advocates. Whilst pie charts are poor at presenting data from a lot of groups, they're actually better performers when the number of groups is low, so it's always good to have large slices of pie. In the days of hand-drawn graphs, few types of graphs were used, because drawing by hand is hard, so it was easier for the very few people who study graph perception to keep up to date. However, since computers have taken over the role of graphing, and can do it with great accuracy, the diversity of graphs has grown, and unfortunately the unsexy field of graphical perception has not. So despite a wide range of new options, we just don't know how well they all work. So for now, this just leaves us with the basics. Oldies but goodies. This is the first in a series of videos on graphs and perception. Please subscribe for more.